Welcome to the Columbus Area United Way Connecting Community Podcast. This is where we interview local nonprofit leaders and explore how we can collaborate to have a thriving community. Welcome to Connecting Community. Um, this is episode three, and I am pleased and blessed to have Abby and Kelly with the Child Advocacy Center here with me today. So, ladies, welcome. Thanks for having us. <laughs> yeah. So, we just, I mean, the purpose of this podcast is just to get information out about local nonprofits in our community making an impact, um, which the Child Advocacy Center does. And before we start that off, though, let us just tell our audience members a little bit about yourself, just maybe where you're from, some of your background, just so they get to know who you are. All right. I'm Abby Shanley. I'm the Child Abuse Prevention Specialist at the Child Advocacy Center. Um, I've been here about six and a half years. I do most of our training and education, um, multidisciplinary team facilitation, and forensic interviews. And I'm Kelly Wacker. I am the Director of the Child Advocacy Center. Um, I've been on board pretty much since the beginning. Um, we opened in the fall of 2004, and I came on board in January of 2005. Wow. So. Um, just have has has been pretty much my adult life mm -hmm. <laughs> has been at the CAC. Mm -hmm. I was pregnant with my baby when I started, so and mm -hmm. she's now almost seventeen. So <laughs> <laughs> I kind of remember you saying you had one graduating yeah. and another one coming yeah. up. Yeah, so yeah, it's been it's been a journey. It has been a yeah. journey. Wonderful. Yeah. So tell us um, in regards to what does the Child Advocacy Center do and the impact that it makes. So uh, we serve child abuse and sexual assault victims. We actually cover 24 counties in Northeast and North Central Nebraska. We have our home center in Norfolk, but we recently opened up a satellite here in Columbus, which we're really excited to be part of the community. Um, we offer forensic interviews, forensic medical exams, advocacy, hair testing. Um, we also help facilitate the multidisciplinary child abuse and neglect teams mm -hmm. and do a great deal of training in our communities. Um, so basically, we are just a child-friendly place where victims are brought um, when they're part of a child abuse investigation. And we work with the other team members, law enforcement, health and human services, to try to provide services in one place um, and meet all of the family and the victim's needs. That's amazing. Uh, it's definitely not something that people really want to have dinner conversations necessarily about, but it is so needed within our community. And to know that we have a satellite office and what that looks like for people who are going through that, right? It's to ensure that victims are receiving the services that they need is critical. Um, can you speak to a little bit about that, um, the services that are provided by the CAC and why they're so important to children and their families? Sure, I can talk a little bit about that. Um, so when there's a report of um, some kind of abuse or neglect, um, typically law enforcement into the Department of Health and Human Services gets involved. And our goal is to bring all of those people to the child in one location so that they can do that joint investigation and we can ensure that those children and families receive the services that they need. Um, so typically in an initial um, visit to our center, the child would receive a forensic interview, the child and family would receive advocacy services, um, mm -hmm. some assessments to determine what kinds of needs they have, um, and then we can follow up that interview with a forensic medical exam. Um, our team members then will follow that child and family through the duration of their case mm -hmm. through advocacy and multidisciplinary team facilitation where we're continuing to meet with those team members and then also engaging those treatment professionals, mental health professionals, education, um, any kind of community services that they're receiving to continue to ensure that that child and family does not fall through the cracks and that they're receiving what they need to heal. Wonderful. So I know there's, with the work that you do, there's layers of complexity, right? And, um, you know, every every case, every situation is completely different than the one prior. Um, what would be something that you would want to tell community members or, you know, just people about maybe myths or misconceptions about the work that you do or about victimization that occurs? Well, you know, it seems that 
generally people don't know we exist until they mm -hmm. need us, mm -hmm. which is great. That is completely fine. And, um, you know, they walk through our doors. They don't know what to expect. Um, you know, what people really need to know is that abuse happens to everyone. It's mm -hmm. all walks of life. It's all races. It's all socioeconomic statuses. It's not just one part of our community. Um, when your child is in school, three of their classmates may have been to our center. And um, it, everything we do is very confidential. Um, but there's also, you know, we want people to know that we're here to help and we don't want there to be a stigma attached to that. Um, abuse happens to everyone. And that's why there's services there so that we can make sure that everyone can heal and become safe. And yeah, we're just here to help. So with the CAC and the work that you do, because both of you have been in it for many years, what motivates you to continue to do that work? Um, if you've ever heard me say anything, it's usually just do the right dang thing for kids. Mm -hmm. Sometimes with a little more emphasis. Than <laughs> <laughs> Maybe yep. switching out the word dang. <laughs> yep. So um, my big thing is just really advocating for those kids, advocating for this system. I really love the system that we work in, but I'm not here to tell you it's not broken. Um, mm -hmm. It is oftentimes broken. And if we don't work together, kids don't get what they need. And so it's really just, um, you know, that collaborative approach and being willing to have those tough, crucial conversations about what's going on in our systems where maybe we're lacking additional services that families could benefit from and how do we get to that point where we can better serve them. And as you say that, um, what would you identify as maybe some missing gaps in where we can better our services as a collective community? What would that be? look like um, in always, your perfect world yeah. right <laughs> I always start out with mandatory reporting mm -hmm. um, I think that if we know That's how critical. to recognize identify and respond responsibly to abuse and neglect um, we can help kids be safe we can help kids thrive um, and then I would focus on the services that are in place um, so I we see a lot of language barriers um, so enhancing those mm -hmm. um, language services and then mental health is always a struggle, making sure that we have quality, high quality, trained um, professionals that can respond appropriately to children who have suffered abuse. Mm -hmm. that's, that's wonderful. Anything on your perspective, Kelly? Um, no, I mean, same. <laughs> we have these conversations over and over. <laughs> and Yeah, and I would agree with that. So, and going back to kind of the first thing that you said, mandatory reporting, I know where you're speaking about, but to, you know, an individual that works in a bank or, you know, uh, works in an insurance office or, you know, moves on or whatnot. What does that mean to a community member that just is going about their daily life? What does mandatory reporting mean? Well, I'm going to let Abby talk about this because it is her forte, but I just want to say that, um, you know, we have, we offer a lot of free training. Um, Abby is our training specialist. And so if anyone ever has any needs or wants to know more, mm -hmm. wants to educate the people that they work with or vol community volunteers, anyone who works with kids, all they have to do is call us and Abby will be there. Like, And we will do this training for free, um, wherever, whenever. Um, but back to the topic at hand, mandatory reporting. I'm going to let you speak yeah. to that. So mandatory reporting for me, um, it's important that people here in Nebraska especially understand that we're all mandatory reporters, whether you're in your professional capacity or not. Um, if you see something at Walmart that may meet the definition of abuse, you want to make sure that you're calling that in and getting that child some help. Um, so just to know that everybody is a mandatory reporter and then just knowing that if something doesn't sit right with you, the law only requires that you have a reasonable suspicion that mm -hmm. abuse or neglect could be occurring. Um, you can make a call to the hotline or your local law enforcement agency at any time um, to report those concerns. Um, and then, as Kelly mentioned, we do offer a lot of training and education. I'm always willing whether we do a full training session on mandatory reporting or you just have us come out and talk a little bit about how to identify it and how to make that report to the hotline, 
I'm always happy to do that. Um, and I love getting in my little Prius and going anywhere <laughs> in our service area. So. <laughs> That's awesome. I think that is important, the aspect of mandatory reporting. And to realize that um, all of us, you know, can be a voice or an advocate for a child. And like you said, when something just doesn't seem right or seem off, you can call easily. Um, it can stay anonymous, but it goes into a system that, you know, maybe that was the first call on that situation, but that could have been the 10th call that now it, right. a child's going right. to receive different services. Right. And so that's why it's important, right? To yeah. just, when you see something and are witnessing something, say something and do something. About and you it. don't have to prove it. You, it's not, right. you know, it's not you in your hands. Investigate it. it just, it absolutely, it puts it in someone's hands who can help. Yes. Awesome. So in regards to the CAC, and as you look forward, um, what are some things that you're excited about, but maybe even things that you might be concerned about in regards to the industry that you serve in and the capacity that you have currently? Well, we're really excited that we're in Columbus now. Yes. Um, this has been um, a long time coming, and the community has really wanted us to come be here, and we're, we've just been so welcomed, and there's been so much support, so we love it. Um, since we have opened here, wow, like I did not anticipate how busy we would be. Um, and we're seeing as many kids out of our satellite office a couple of months, even more than we did at our home CAC in North Fork. Oh. So um, the need is there. And mm -hmm. so we're excited to be here in the community. Um, and I know excited isn't the right word, but it's the right thing. Mm -hmm. We're in the right place working with the people um, here who are we have found the Columbus community, law enforcement, health and human services are very passionate about mm -hmm. protecting kids. And um, so that's refreshing to work with them. One thing I can see is, you know, potentially us needing more time here, mm -hmm. growing our services here, just mm -hmm. because of um, what we've seen in the few months we've been here working with kids and families. Um, it's it's been eye-opening, and so we're really glad. It was a great move. We had a satellite in another location. Um, we felt like we would serve many more kids and families here, and so we relocated that satellite. So it's, it's been a great move. Well, I know from the United Way's perspective, we're thankful to have your services here more in a local on-site present. And and you're right, the, the excitement, it, it's hard to, you know, <laughs> that word, but it is exciting because the stark reality is acknowledging and knowing that people that may not have had access to those services before have a more accessible right. way of being able to access your resources. And that's where hope and healing comes from after victimization. Um, so we're thankful for that. Uh, so as you move forward, tell us in regards to the outreach, because you do outreach and prevention, um, besides mandatory reporting, what are some other avenues that you provide? Um, so just our run of the mill trainings. I shouldn't say run of the mill because not everybody, <laughs> but they're run of the mill for me because they're the ones I do routinely. Right. Um, so I do a three hour mandatory reporting, identifying and responding responsibly to abuse and neglect. Um, we offer darkness to light stewards of children. Um, which is specific mm -hmm. to child sexual abuse, um, has some survivor stories built into how do we respond re responsibly to that. Um, we do a trauma, working with children who have experienced trauma training, um, just kind of anything related to children we would offer on a regular basis to any organization looking for training. And the vast majority of those are, we offer free. Um, so we've secured other, other funding for those. Mm -hmm. Um, additionally, we started just this last year an annual conference. It's called the Northeast Nebraska Family Violence Summit. Um, we had our first annual in April of this year and saw about 200 human service professionals attended that, brought in some national speakers. So excited to have that in this area. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of people are used to traveling, Lincoln, Omaha, mm -hmm. out of state for those trainings. So we're excited to be able to offer that here in Northeast Nebraska. So we are already in progress planning next year's for April 5th and 6th of 2023. Mark your calendar. Yes, exactly. April 5th and 6th, 2023. Yes. Yes. That's awesome. Wonderful. Yes. So I just have really one last question and it's a little more lighthearted in regards to what you do because 
you work in a field that is providing services and of, oftentimes you hear un, unimaginable stories, right? And we know that and we recognize it. And I thank you for doing that work. Um, but when you get in your car and you need to put on some karaoke, what would be your karaoke song of choice to go to? Okay, anything, don't laugh at me, anything wham. Or wham, like, wow. George Michael, 80s. Wake like, me that's up. That's where I'm going. Go -go. Maybe some ABBA, <laughs> Dancing Queen, not going to lie. Okay, we well, know Kelly's. <laughs> no shame. I'm Spice Girls. Spice Girls. <laughs> I think I'm blown away by both your responses. <laughs> in my life that the Spice Girls cannot heal from <laughs> That is awesome. Well, thank you both for being here. Thank you for the work that you do. And thank you for being a presence in our community. And um, my hope is to just bring more awareness around what you do and what you provide um, here locally. So thank you. Thank you to the United Way. Yeah, you're welcome.